Okay. So everyone, look at here. Okay, here we go. Okay, am I audible? <coughs> Papa and Sai. Yes, for sure. Okay, so you can go to mute. So we'll go into me now. See. Now. Nah. Okay. See, in a project development, we have different pages. See, first thing is, we'll go and get the requirements. So, make allow the requirements. Actually, the quality management system quality. Quality management. Project, okay. Company, pharmaceutical. All the clinical trials. Requirements at last, ne? document, ah, la te anna application unda dhan ki. Ah, document. Excel document, last ne? No, no, all board la. All document, okay. So, See, in the project development, if you already know about it, that's fine. Otherwise, you can go through it. After that, I'll explain the project. Any project, how you have to So, first, you'll get the requirements. Okay. See, once you get the requirements, okay, so, you will do the analysis part. So, once you are done with analysis, you need to go ahead. Uh, sometimes, it is something like, you need to go ahead and prepare test cases, initially only. Okay. Test case documents. Okay, so and also in some cases you will have another doc type of document called um, like uh, proposed functionality. So functionality like proposed functionality. Okay, so in this document you will go ahead and uh, let them know what is the current functionality. That is how the application is working today and later on you will go ahead and you will write down in the same document what is the future functionality after the changes. After the changes that you are going to make how it will behave. So you will write down all these things and then you will prepare a test case document and you will share these two with the tech leads and then business analyst. Okay. So, so who will prepare these requirements? Okay. Requirements will be prepared by business analyst okay so business analyst is the one who sits be, uh, just in between you and a developers and business actual business okay so you know right pega applications are being accessed by some of the business users okay so in your interviews how many business users have to your application okay so mostly pega applications will not have more than 100 not more than that i don't think so 100 120 150 in some cases you will have 10 business users 15 20 25 okay it depends 100 business users means uh, obviously your application should be a big application and should be uh, you should have different teams sitting in different locations across the country and they are working on okay so your uh, so like uh, whatever i have told initially in the demo so after the demo your pega applications will be accessed by back operations teams so unlike if you go to java and .NET, many applications are given to end users means we are the end users we will access the application in that case how many business users you have you have many users right say suppose facebook you take how many business users facebook has it is in uh, billions billions of people so unlike that pega applications are being back operations applications so in, if you go to bank so the bank people who are the employees of the particular organization they are the business users till today for pega applications so there is no application that is there interacting with end users so far in pega okay so now mostly you can say 60 business users who are sitting across different places in the country of us uk whatever it is okay or 50 or 40 or 20 it depends okay you need to manage to go ahead and tell them okay so now 
so each uh, there will be different teams so if you have 60 people 60 people will not work independently right they may be for a team of five people like that in a team seven people will be there sitting across the locations and you will go ahead and so the business analyst is the person who will be interacting with that business users whenever they are accessing the application so they will hear from real business okay so they will hear from the business this is what we are doing exactly today okay we need this kind of implementation for our business to make the enhancements and so that we can provide better solutions to the customers so business analyst will have complete idea of the application functionality they do not understand technology okay they will understand they do not understand prpc technology they will understand only the functionality of application okay so so better than you business analyst knows about the business functionality better than business analyst the end users will have good knowledge about the application okay whatever that they are working on and now they will come to business analyst and they will discuss with the business analyst in the meetings this is what the today's functionality we need to make changes to the existing functionality in another way so that we can provide better solutions otherwise so we are going to provide this new type of feature to the end users today for our users so so far we have uh, all these bankings we don't have mortgage banking we are, our our organization is getting into mortgage banking so we need to implement the mortgage banking banking structure and implementations in our application so they will come up with the requirements so they they both will have uh, uh, will discuss and they will prepare the requirement documents okay so the business analyst will prepare the requirement documents see in the preparation of the requirement documents so they will decide on so these are the um, okay i'll come to here so requirements right so in the preparation of requirement document what they will do is so number of requirements they will identify okay these are the number of requirements okay so i want to complete this requirement say suppose i have five requirements okay so these five requirements Russia, they will give share, oh sorry yeah i'm going to share it now okay so these are the number of requirements these all these requirements have to be completed within these three months so so the number of requirements they will specify some time okay time period time duration will be there you have to complete your tasks once you are being assigned with this particular task okay so your task will be taken today means it should be completed by the within the time duration okay so they will decide on it okay when to start this task and what is the end date of production date so that is called production release date production release date okay so now so production release date means when the code will move to live servers okay so after the time duration is being decided based on the methodology they will go ahead and proceed and make sure to identify the number of points something what requirement should take how many days and all say suppose you are going to work on waterfall methodology okay so here we go ahead with methodologies okay say suppose waterfall methodology see in a water waterfall methodology so the development will be like it is like a rapid development and also the requirements will be given to you so there won't be uh, they will not give you certain deadlines there will be a deadline the deadline can be extended okay so but you will not deliver before deadlines but that is for sure but in a waterfall methodology deadlines can be extended okay so there is no specific time period and there is no specific time to take the calls and all you can decide on on spot so suppose tomorrow we will come together on the call and discuss about the uh, things that we have done so far and any uh, gaps that we identify in the requirement something like that it depends on how you will go ahead and talk to the va or tech leads so we will arrange the calls and there is no specific process for making the calls say suppose you can go ahead and set up your own three days once we will go to sit on the call or two days once or five days once or weekly once we will sit on the call something like that so you will see this is called bulk uh, uh, bulk requirement development okay so you will be given with the requirements you will do the analysis there is no documents preparation is required you will not prepare much of the documents like you will not prepare analysis document proposed functionality documents this and all you are not required to do so once you get the requirements you will do the analysis if you have any questions you will sit in the call and get the explanation done and everything is done so there is no walk through of the requirements and all given to you when i say walk through means this is how uh, so they will usually open the application this is how it is behaving today tomorrow it has to behave like this 
so that is what walk through of the application that will not be given in the you, are, you should not be expecting that in the waterfall methodology okay so in a waterfall methodology you will go ahead and do the development uh, like it's for a, a certain period of one month or 15 days it depends okay depending on the requirements also the deadlines can be extended it is like a uh, uh, complete development see completely you are developing a flow entire flow that you can take into waterfall methodology okay so it's like a module complete module development you can say okay so there will be a waterfall methodology team and also in your project after see initially when they are going to start the project they will go ahead with this methodology waterfall methodology means it's like a uh, bulk development all the requirements will be given to you and you are going ahead and developing it okay so your requirements for gathering the requirements you can use maybe uh, there is there are different tools so this is one of the tool jira so this is one of the tool where in which they will go ahead and post the requirement documents you can note down see there will be an application okay the application name uh, the application tool name is jira okay usually whatever i have used i am telling there there might be another uh, tools also available in the market sharepoint sharepoint is different sharepoint is not for the purpose of only requirements okay so i'll talk about that one also see jira tool you can use see what they will do is they will open a request it is like a uh, so they they will have they will have access to it you will not have access to open the request and all so they will open a request right they will write down the requirements and attach requirement documents it can be either excel excel documents or word documents whatever it is if you have some diagrams and all they can use still word documents only requirements point wise they want to write they will write in the excel document okay and then uh, attach the requirement documents and so there will be certain for these three months they have uh, raised five requirements okay they will upload the five requirements into the jira tool and they will notify the tech leads so what they will do then tech leads will go ahead and open the open the jira tool log into jira tool and then they will go ahead with looking at the requirements so each requirement will have an id okay each requirement will have a requirement id say suppose in my requirement requirement id is equal to req0001 in this requirement i can have see i'll go ahead requirement okay so we'll have requirement id 0001 okay in this req0001 you will have the requirements defined 1.1 1 .1. so it suppose so, so say suppose 1 so within the 1 so what what they will give here complete uh, uh, description of the requirement okay we need changes to our existing application to add new mortgage banking okay something like this they will write so within this you will go ahead and start 1.1 requirement so otherwise this this can be a1 this can be so it depends a 1.1 and they will write the requirements here one by one so after this a 1.1 1.2 so like this they will go ahead and write so on 1.n okay so they will write see here each requirement will be written this is called uh, uh, user story okay these are called user stories okay so these are all called user stories and your requirements are set to be use cases okay so you'll get use cases in uh, business technology you will call it as use cases okay each requirement is a use case you have five requirements means five use cases in the use cases you will have user stories stories means requirement points everything the technology raw army okay okay so you will have user stories see uh, you are not required to think much about what is a story and all see what is the story will have some points in that okay these are all points are called user stories and the entire requirement is said to be use cases okay so now if you go ahead here so this is what waterfall methodology okay the same way of requirements will be available in scrum methodology also see if you go ahead with scrum methodology uh, yeah this is all whatever we have seen so far is only requirements so the jira tool is just for requirement yeah that's what we will access usually i don't know what they will do more than this 
okay so say suppose you take scrum methodology okay in the agile scrum is one of the methodology so the agile is a methodology so part of it is scrum okay so you can understand it is agile or scrum okay so if you go ahead with the scrum say suppose most of the your enhancement projects and all you will see in the uh, you will see in the scrum methodology okay so it is a defined structure scrum is a defined structure so where you have scrum masters okay so usually your managers managers are te technical managers are the scrum masters are normal managers are the scrum masters one second pramod scrum methodology if you go to the terminology you have scrum masters so usually who are the mir scrum master okay oh third party oh. usually your scrum master will be managers from your company or from vendor whatever it is okay so, so high level tech, technical managers or normal managers so they will have their own certifications scrum certifications they will do okay so scrum masters will decide on the giving the points and all to your uh, requirements here again the same thing user stories will be there okay in your application requirements will be there so here each story say suppose i said here a1 right within the a1 i have a1.1 so okay story 1 okay so this will, they will give some points to it okay say suppose one point they will give or two points depends on the requirement so say that for one point equal how many days it will be like we have a story and after the story we have task mm -hmm. so uh, we take for a sprint two week sprint mm -hmm. we take two stories mm -hmm. and under the story we give the five task to the other ah that is fine each point they will give five five to six points. numbers what is the numbers count story points yes all points means what is the meaning of story point See, uh, see, if you say, I am developing, developing a button. I am going to give story. one point for the story. Meaning, means? Putting a button, that's what story. So, where it should be, how it should be, those are the tasks. Ah, that is fine. For each story, there will be points. That is what I am asking. Uh, Make idea of it, no? Okay, so we will go ahead now. See here, see for each story, story 1 to n, so you have some points given, story points. One, it can be 1, it can be 2 or it can be 5, okay? So if you say one point equal to sometimes it is two days or one point equal to one day okay so this particular requirement can take one day okay so you should be able to reach that particular point okay two days two have they have given means can be two days or four days you have to complete this task within the given points okay if you're going to finish it within the given points they will uh, revisit the uh, requirement and reduce the number of points so that your time duration will be reduced and efforts will be reduced finally so that the cost on uh, cost to the uh, particular vendor will be reduced obviously okay so that will be decided here okay so 
here if you go ahead like this user points uh, user uh, story points will be there okay so after that in a scrum methodology you will have daily status calls okay so you will have daily status calls with your team within your team you can have and with the business analysts okay so you will never go ahead and communicate with business users until and unless you are working in support projects okay if you are going to be a developer you are not required to go back to the business users business users is the one who will work on the application directly in the production environment okay so they always you need to communicate just hang on Give me two minutes. Yes. See, I'm audible now. In between, I lost the connection. Okay. So now, daily status calls you will be attending. So you'll be attending the status calls with your team. Okay. Say suppose your team of five members. The five members sitting together. Okay. Maybe at the same place or different locations. You are in Hyderabad, that in Kolkata, and business analyst will join. Maybe if, so the business analyst can be from your team from your organization or he can he or she can be from vendors organization client organization okay so both cases are possible okay most of the scenarios you will see business analyst from client side okay and few scenarios you will see business analyst sitting with your organization okay so now you will have the status calls in the status calls what you will discuss is if you have any concerns any doubts any ambiguities in the requirements any gap that you have identified say that you have been given with one requirement that should be completed in two days another person has given with the another requirement so but you both have dependency once the other requirement is completed only you can start this one okay so these kind of dependencies you need to identify in your analysis and you need to tell the business analyst initially before you start see once after everything is done this is the gap if you tell now uh, uh, this will be a bad uh, remark on the company itself okay you should not do that see one thing is you you will you will be never missing the deadlines okay if you are going to miss the deadline means out okay you will be fired out that is for sure okay so no one will, will entertain you to miss the deadlines okay so you have to meet the deadlines whatever that is being given okay so in a daily status calls you will work with the business analyst and uh, discuss about all these things what is the progress of your work what you have done so far today by end of day what you have done you need to send an email notification to your team so not to the business and this to the your team and you need to discuss everything with the tech leads if you have any questions any doubts any concerns with the application the first point of contact is your team lead probably you will discuss with your colleagues and then go to team lead and then tech leads if you all people decided to go to business analyst then only you have to communicate with the business analyst you should not be directly communicating with business analyst that is not the correct process as a low level employee you should not be directly communicating without informing the lead or technical architects okay so if it is beyond the level of technical architects and everyone then you have to go to the something you may not know that can be known to other person okay so if it is not been resolved within your team then only you should reach the business analyst for that particular requirement and uh, to get it clarified okay so this is what the general terminology in a scrum methodology apart from daily status calls what you have Okay, what we will have daily status calls requirements and you have fixed deadlines okay so in a scrum so you have different sprints right so where each sprint equal to two weeks means 10 days 10 working days two weeks okay so you will you will get the requirements Say that you are working on today's sprint this week, the next sprint requirements will be already given to you. Okay, you will not start working on it, but still those will be available, made it ready. Okay, so you will have two sprints a month, uh, two weeks a sprint, one sprint. So in a sprint, you have use cases given to you. So for these two weeks, you may get four use cases. Four use cases, you are two people, two people are developer. Okay, each one will take two, two requirements, two requirements, two use cases. Use case will have user stories, you need to complete these two. Okay, so once you have been done with your development, you need to go ahead and do development is done. So what you will do, you will do unit testing. Okay, so once of all unit testing is done, so during the unit testing, what you need to do is you need to go ahead and complete all your test cases.
okay positive and negative test cases also you need to verify okay so also in some of the test cases in some of the unit testing you need to consider in flight and so sorry in flight and future cases what we will call future cases so so what is the meaning of in flight and future cases say suppose your business is expecting some changes to your application okay this change should be applicable to the work objects that you are going to create after the implementation date it has moved to product it will move to production on august 16th after it has moved to production once it is there in the production from that moment onward if you are creating a new work object the fifth screen in my application should be available for all the old work objects which are already been available which are being worked on which are still going through the application see you, you have submitted a task okay so say suppose you, you have a leave request flow okay in the leave request flow you have submit a request approve or reject okay this is the functionality okay today so you have come up with new changes in between you are going to introduce one more uh, this one one more assignment so see suppose what can what it could be review some review by someone else okay review screen before approval or reject just a review screen okay this is the in between you are going to introduce so this thought or whatever the new screen that you are introducing it should be available to the work objects that you are going to create from so and so day what is that day august 16th i will move the code to live environment from august 16th after you create any work objects the this particular screen should come to the users and say suppose i have submitted my review request today okay so tomorrow is august 16th means it is a whole day but my manager will respond on this particular work object maybe after august 16th so he is accessing the work object after august 16th where new code is there but the code has been created uh, but the work object has been created in the past so this is called in flight in flight work object in flight work object means which is already available and pending in the system which will also move to the flow after the production is been done so for this particular in flight work object you should not see this code or this particular screen so in flight means the work objects that are already been created in the system which will still flow through the application after the code new changes are been done okay so the work objects which are being created before the production move and the work objects which are being created after the production these are the future work objects these are in flight work objects okay so so you need to understand the requirements with respect to the in flight work objects also you need to create your test cases with respect to that okay so if i am going to give some feature to user that feature should be effective from so on so day okay but not to the old codes old work objects okay that you need to remember so you need to complete all your test cases and you need to give the test results test case is pass test case fail something if it is pass what is the work object number with this work object i have tested okay so you need to provide test results unit test results i mean sorry. unit test results so in the unit test results what you will give you will give work objects ids work object ids so these are the work objects that i have tested for each test case you need to provide clear everyone okay so this is what you need to do after unit testing is done you will notify tech leads okay so once you are notified with the tech leads what they will do once all the people are done with their code changes they will go ahead and create a product rule okay so they will go ahead and create a product rule once the product rule is been done so now so your code is been done everything is done so where you will code all these things you have different environments or different servers available okay one is development server so this is the server where developers were work okay so and another one is you can say it is qa or testing or int integration okay so anything you can say it depends in your company how they are going to call it okay so this region will be accessed by mostly our testers okay in your team there will be testers right so those will be working on the application for testing purpose once you are done with your code product file creation you will copy paste the deploy the product file into test region so once it is been moved to the test region what they will do 
So they will verify our uh, test cases, whatever that we have done, and they will prepare their own test cases. They will not completely depend on your test cases. Okay, they will have application knowledge. They will prepare according to the requirements. They will uh, require, requirements will be shared to them as per the requirements. They will prepare their own test case documents, and they will go through all their test cases. And if at all something fails in the testing, they identify this feature is failing. Okay, so what they will do is they will raise a defect. So in order to raise a defect, okay, you have a tool called what is the tool? Defect management system. What is the other one you told? Quality life cycle. Quality center or life cycle something is telling. Quality center. Okay. Then quality center. Na? Quality life cycle. Na? Yes. The quality life cycle. Na? Yeah. It can be any name. Defect management system. So they will raise the defect and it will generate a defect ID. Okay. They will send it to you, your team. Okay. So this is the defect ID we have raised. This is what they will give the description. What is the, how they have tested. Step by step they will give and what is the expected result. What is the error that they are getting or what is the functionality missing that they are looking at they will send all the screenshot and everything will be given to you you will log into defect management system open it and understand and you will need to work on it once you are completed you need to again get a product and then migrate it into the production uh, sorry qa region see once you are done everything is done all the test cases are being successful qas are done so they will notify back to the business analyst saying our testing is done everything is fine we are going to approve it your qa manager will be there he will approve this requirement has been approved for further proceedings so it will go to UAT. See, this region will be there with every client. UAT means user acceptance testing. Okay. See, UAT means user acceptance testing. This is one server. This is one server development. QA is one server. UAT is one server. See, here they will do regression testing. So when I say regression testing, so testing with respect to all the test cases, testing with respect to the old cases, and everything they will test whatever that they can do okay so complete testing they will they will do even business analyst will do the testing here in the UAT regions in many scenarios business analyst also will sit and complete the testing part this is called regression testing once your regression testing is completed and everything is fine say suppose at this point of time if you get any defects again you will be notified through DMS and you need to complete and move it to the QA region and then See, at this point of time, if you find any issues means it's not your problem. So, so you are not required to face any issue. If at, at QA region, you, you have got defects means people will scold you. You are the responsible person. If it is more to user acceptance testing and you still identify uh, someone, any issues means that is a problem of testers. They did not test it perfectly. Okay. So, after this, it will go to production region. So, production is live environment okay live environment where end users will work on it okay so there will be so code will be mode so here after the, see during the production deployment what happens see for a production deployment there will be a release date okay so release date is august 16th i want to release okay before the release date what you need to do is you will have a tool usually so suppose you have a service now or service center ticketing tool so these are the ticketing tools so in this tool as a developer you need to raise a ticket see this ticket what what it will do it will have the production release date it will mention what is the application that is going on to the production all the details about the application what modules are moving everything will be specified you need to add the approvals so who are the approvers so the approvals will be your manager project manager ba and some, some business manager again from business side okay apart from business analyst there can be another managers these are all people who have to approve this ticket then only it will move to the production okay now so in this ticket what you need to attach so you need to attach what we need to attach what we need to attach in this ticket implementation plan right 
you don't know about implementation plan see it is irrespective of technology i'm talking either it is dot net java pega whatever it is so far we have seen is irrespective of technology it's not only pega say you will do the same thing or what you don't have implementation plan without implementation plan no code will go to production in any technology anyway what is an implementation plan will contain how you need to move the code okay what is the duration of whatever the task that you are going to perform so this implementation plan is the uh, uh, what is that uh, uh, instructions for release team see who will do your production deployment is there will be a separate team you will never do production deployment okay so there will be a separate team called release management team so the release management team will go ahead and get your request so you will notify them this is the path where we have the code they will take the code and deploy it into the target environment see your deployment will not happen through pega tool okay in the production so they can use some special tools called arm i don't know the abbreviation and r what else will be there svn is not a deployment tool it's a code maintenance tool version management tool uh, arm git what is the deployment tool you use Okay, what are this? What is the cloud name? What is the deployment you will use? Okay, SVN is also can be used. Huh? Okay, Serena version manager, sub version manager. Serena version manager. Sub version manager. Okay, so SVN or Git or ARM tools can be used. These are different tools. You are not required to know about the abbreviations and all. Okay, now this tool what it will do is it will copy and paste into the respective folders. They will do the configurations in this tool. There will be some scripts running up whenever you go ahead and do something. Okay. Okay. So instructions. See the implementation document will tell about the backup plan. Okay. What it will tell about, what it will talk about, I will tell you each one clearly. Okay. So it will talk about what code to move. Okay. And it's time so for everything there will be a certain time period you have to complete so before you move the code what you need to do is you need to take the backup so in case of pega the backup will be your database so they have some already it's predefined the backup tools will be there they will take backup and keep it aside okay so once after the backup taking is been done so they will go ahead and move the code say suppose if at all anything fails they need to restore it right that is what back taking backup and then restore the backup okay so then your code will be moved and they will have backout plan. So what is the backout plan? Backout plan on 20. So if you want to back out your code, there should be some plan predefined structure, right? Say suppose you have moved your production code and it is failing. It is completely uh, stopping your application from proceeding further. You should have a backout plan defined. So in the backout plan, how you need to go ahead and redeploy the backout to whatever you have taken the backup. They will follow the backout plan and they will take the backup whatever that is been available and they will redeploy it to the server so that the server will behave in the as it as it was behaving in the past. So these are all will be given to you and testing time. So again, after you move to the production, you will not simply think like it is it has worked in development, integration, and UAT. Here also it will work, you will not think. So here you need to test. Who will test here is business analyst. So here you will, they will not create any business. They will have already some test uh, codes available in this test cases. They will run those test cases. It will be fine. They will not create any new business in this one. And once whatever the test cases they have, they are satisfied. They will leave it. Okay. They will say sign off. Production sign off. Okay. Once you get the sign off, you can leave. See during the time of deployment as a developer, you need to be available sitting at your desk. Maybe you need to communicate with the communicator or you should be available on the call. If at all they face any issues during the deployment with the code or testing during the code with the code, you need to work on it immediately and provide a solution. Okay. So these are all the pages that you need to complete when you start with either. See this deployment will be done either waterfall or whatever it is. The, the, the deployment process is same. Okay. So now just let me summarize. See. In summary, in summary, if you go to the methodologies, if you're going to work in waterfall methodology, you will have the rapid development of your requirements. The requirements will be used. It's a huge functionality. You'll go ahead and develop the things. 
and you will sit according to your convenient on the calls you will go ahead and notify the business analyst whoever it is and you will get the requirements as use cases and user stories okay there won't be any sprints and all in waterfall now coming to the scrum methodology there will be scrum masters available you have different sprints two sprints a week sorry one sprint in two weeks okay you will get a use case in the sprint and there will be user stories each story will be given with a point so you need to complete so suppose your sprint uh, two weeks right two requirements you are being assigned with means one one requirement you have to complete in one week one requirement you have to complete in another week okay right once you complete with the first one only you have to jump on the second one do not start parallelly okay that will not make any sense okay so once you are done with the first requirement go to the second requirement in the first requirement you have five user stories one point each five days so you have to complete within the user's given points okay and if at all there are any dependencies say suppose you are going to miss a requirement in this print what you will do you will move to next sprint so this requirement entire say suppose in the requirement within the requirement you are going to miss only one point you will not move this point to next require next sprint you will have to take out entire requirement and move to the next sprint next means not immediately after the next uh, availability of whatever that have, that they are going to prepare maybe it can be after one month or two months whatever it is okay maybe it can be immediately okay so like this if you are going to miss one particular user story within a requirement use case you will not move the independent uh, use uh, user story to the next sprint entire requirement should be taken out and move to the next sprint you need to remember it okay so this is how user stories once you are done with uh, analysis and everything test case uh, unit testing and all you will notify the tech leads they will take the uh, product file and then they will deploy it or they will notify the release team again to deploy it into the integration region once it is been moved to the integration region you need to notify the test uh, testing team our code is been moved ready for testing so they will jump on to the test region and then they will go ahead with the testing process they will go ahead if at all any defects they will raise the defects into the dms you need to complete the defects and again do the deployment once everything is fine in the integration it will be moved to the uat user acceptance test region once it is moved to the user acceptance acceptance testing they will do the regression testing so once after regression testing is been completed and everything is fine so you need to go ahead and prepare the implementation plan so in the implementation plan you need to mention what are the require what are uh, what is the path of the uh, this uh, application uh, code file and everything you need to mention you need to add the approvers you need to add the backup plan you need to add uh, the um, uh, backup plan as well as uh, backup how you are going to take backup and what time it will take and all so you need to be available as a developer during the deployment support usually it is night shift that time okay so this and all you need to do once the deployment of the production is done business analyst will do the testing once the testing is been done they will give the approval production is fine we can go ahead and set it down so you need to come back so everything is done this is the pro process you will go ahead and move the project everyone clear any questions any doubts anything you do not you do not understand So, मेरे को ऐसे चादू कौन नहीं है? Waterfall में तो आल जी एंटी जस्ट जो स्क्रम में तो आल जी नहीं है मतलब उसका चादू कौन? So go ahead and read it on the web also. You tell me. This process anyway you will not get anywhere. Next. It's not minimum maximum. It's not minimum maximum. See your scrum methodology is very strict. You have to complete something within the specified time. Okay. You may extend on the release dates for water methodology, waterfall methodology, but not scrum. Okay. Scrum means it should be done. Okay, so you will get the billing with hours in Scrum. Okay, as a whole project, uh, you will get uh, in the waterfall. Clear, everyone? Okay. So up to this, clear? Rupa, you have any questions? Sai. See, if you are already working, all this process, whatever so far we have discussed, is same with respect to, uh, sir, irrespective of any technology. Yes, Asha, clear. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So now we'll go ahead and look into project. Okay. So here you go now. See in the project explanation how you need to say suppose you are going to put insurance product or banking product, whatever the project you are taking. Okay. So you need to remember all these things commonly and general. So here you go ahead for your project development. Again, I'm going to repeat. You have different servers available. Okay. development server which is what you are going to work on okay so anything you are going to speak with respect to your project explanation project code that you have done you have to speak with respect to development environment only okay clear 
everyone understand about development integration uh, user acceptance and production these terms understand adho inda harsha work chain or so i will give you in this way say suppose i am working on my machine right i am developing my code on the machine see the development code and the users will work uh, access the application will not be on the same machine okay i will develop the code in one machine where prpc is available the code will be tested in another machine where prpc is available it will be moved code will be copy pasted to other region and then tested from that region it will be taken to another region called uit means it is another server again on that again you are you have prpc installed you will move this product file into that machine and you have a live environment that is be, that is been accessed by end users flipkart application you are accessing right that is a live environment that is called production server okay so on that you need to move the final code finally code should be moved to the live environment that is what production region see how many servers you will have for development you have one server for integration you have one server for uit you can have one or more servers okay it's not only one server for uit region they will maintain the nodes and all the servers can be three there will be a load balancing server say suppose you take flipkart flipkart will be installed on one server no it will be installed on 10 servers application will be available on 10 servers so if you go ahead here this is one server this is server 2 this is server 3 and server 4 to server n okay so there will be a load balancing server available here okay and users will be connecting to the flipkart application from here browser from browser users will be connecting to the flipkart application so once you type flipkart.com it will not go to directly to the application server leave about red app and all after your authentication is done you will come to load balancing server this is called load balancing server say suppose you are going to log into flipkart and order a product on the big sale day okay so how many people will log in, in it will be in crores that time servers will go down okay i need to manage to be uh, available my server up at every time and users should not face any issues i have my server uh, my application is installed on n number of servers so there will be an intermediate load balancing server available once you type the url flipkart.com you will go to load balancing server and load balancing server will read through all these nodes how many users are there in this node so it will redirect one see first user will be redirected to this second user will be redirected to this and third user will be redirected to this and fourth user will be redirected to this so like this if 10000 users are joining so 12000 it will divide 12 by 4 it's not exactly 12 by 4 suppose 3500 onto one server 3000 on another server 2500 on so that your application can manage to get more traffic and handle it okay so you will not feel like you have connected to what server different servers you will not feel you will feel like only one server but your application uh, so your load balancing will balance of load means the number of users are requested who are logging into the particular server okay so like this you, you will have different servers available to uit and production obviously you will have multiple servers because on a production you should not be going ahead and uh, allowing uh, multiple people on the single server means it will go down so more traffic means you will see latency issues application okay clear latency on the slowness okay so now like this your development is one server and like this see whatever you are going to speak about your project and whatever you have developed you need to speak about it with respect to the development server only okay you will not code something in you at all so now how you will access your servers so here we are going ahead and clicking on a double clicking on a file and file is bringing up the server and we are going to click on login and this is not the way see prpc will not be installed on your machine in real time it will be installed on one server application like flipkart is installed on server they have given you on url to access it similarly your development will uh, application will be installed on development server they will give you a url it's not www dot it's http lo, uh, sir, we have right local host pr web pr server similarly some numbers 14.1.5 that uh, what is that we call ip numbers or it can be a normal url way also okay so using that url you will type in your browser in your office and click on that you will see pega login screen okay so now you have two types of logins
So one is a developer login. So like how you are going to work on VR, we see the same screens you see. And the second one is SS4. This is called single sign on. Okay. See, when you are going to access the application, VRPC application end users, they will not see the screen, Pega logo, heart symbol and all they will not see. They will see a common screen, okay, which is a plain screen with username and password, some other company logos and all. That's, that is called single sign on screen. See, for developer login, development URL and for this one, this is called SSO URL. So, you will get two URLs for development server. Okay, one URL is single sign on, another URL is development. You will log into this server, you will do your development and complete your testing. Once you are done with your testing, you should not think like your code is working and all. After it is completed, you need to log on to single sign on. There will be another URL. Log in with single sign on. The operator IDs for single sign on are different from your operator ID. You will get it from the higher authorities. Okay, you need to log into with that particular login ID and password and you have to test it. Once your testing is successful in the single sign on means you have tested it exactly how end users access. That time you will conclude that your code is working. Clear? Try to understand. Okay. So single sign on URL they will be giving, giving you. Okay. So now. So once after your single sign on testing is completed, go ahead and it is been completed your testing. Okay, that is what. So you need to understand all these things. You have different servers available. Development, integration, UIT and production. UIT and production have multiple servers and load balancing will be available. And your SMA. SMA will, will be installed on different server again. Here we, are, we have it on same server, right? When you are going to add a new node in SMA, it will ask you local machine, local JVM or remote machine. If you select remote machine means your SMA is installed on different server. In real time, your SMA will be installed on another server. Okay, your PRPC alone will be here. Your SMA will be. Once you click on go to PRPC, whatever this, this is being configured, you, you go there, you will see a login screen. You need to log in with the credentials into SMA. Okay, so once after that is been, then that is fine. Okay, now, so like this, you have, you will maintain different servers for different things in Pega. So, Everyone clear up to this? Okay. So these are all points you need to remember. I will send this video. You listen to five, six times and then try to write down that time again. Okay. So next. So in a project explanation, see you have done a project. Say suppose you are going to do a project called loans, collections or it can be insurance project or it can be banking project, your banking project or Court orders project health or health care. See, when you are going to keep a project in your resume, so you need to be pretty much confident about business. Okay? project to business You should be able to understand its real-time business. So usually which products more or less insurance, healthcare insurance or vehicle insurance or human insurance or any kind of insurance, you are much aware of it, right? And cards processing. So in the cards processing also, you you, you, you have some knowledge up to 50% you are aware of how you will go out and initiate a card processing and all, okay? Otherwise loans. For loan processing also, you have clear idea what they will do, what is the initial stage and ending stage. See, when you are going to explain your project, so before you go ahead and learn about any project, it is the same process. Okay. You write down in the notes, all the screens. What is the first screen? What is the second screen? What is the third screen? Fourth screen? Fifth screen? What is the exact input? What is the final output? These are all you need to identify. Okay. So you need to draw these diagrams and you need to give the names of your own names to your screens and fields you need to identify because you're not going to work on really, right? If you have worked on real means that's fine. So we're going to get a project and you need to go ahead and manage to tell the project on your own. Okay, any kind of project. Say suppose you need to identify all the terminology through the Google. Okay, for loans means what are the terminologies available? So there will be a banker. Who is the banker you are going to take the loan from? Uh, who is the requester? Okay, and then 
disbursement loan disbursement and pre processing fee post processing something uh, pre closure fees EMI. okay post processing emis EMI. so these are not some technical terms with respect to your project you should have in your mind okay and while well, coming to insurance i suppose okay insurer who is the insurer uh, who is what is the insurance company name under insurance company insurance provider who is the provider who is the insurance what is meant by reinsurance okay so in insurance what are the terms available policy insurance policy effective date expiry date premium quote submission quote numbers okay this and all first you get the terminology about your business you should be able to tell it very easily okay so this one you can go out and do google it and you can read it and then you will get the terminology okay so if i go into apply for a uh, uh, suppose some court order something like that okay so suppose you are going to uh, work on a uh, banking check deposit here creditor will be available debitor will be available and uh, what else and banker okay uh, who, uh, and third party banker check details. Uh, check details like this for anything you need to identify the business terminology and accordingly you need to go then it is very easy if you say a project like normal story it will not be correct you should have some technical terms involved included in your uh, explanation okay see first thing so you need to go ahead and write down before you proceed and explain your project appearing for the interview write down everything what you have to tell okay what is the project you write down in the project how you have to tell write down read it read it read it and tell it okay now so as i suppose my project is a loan project or insurance project so we will take any kind of insurance say suppose i'll better explain this say suppose insurance project see once you take insurance project you write down all the terms okay so what is an insurance will have i'll tell you here so this and all if you do not know also submission and all it doesn't matter but you should have a quote see for insurance or loan or whatever it is you should have some term you should know quote what is meant by quote quotation, quotation. okay yeah. what is the quotation amount for your premium okay. what is the quotation amount for your loan based on your salary your uh, experience and what are the other debts that you have in the market and all they will give you a quotation okay and then effective date and end date so what is the meaning of effective date policy duration yeah see effective date means say suppose you are applying for a loan or insurance policy today means it will not be effective from today itself it will be effective from so and so future day okay expiry date means one year policy you are taking end date is one year loan five years you are going to put end end date is fifth year last day and one year means one year two years means two years like this you need to identify this effective date and end date will be there for loans insurance cards and everything your card will have an effective date debit card it will have an expiry date your passport also will have an effective date and expiry date same way okay everything will have an effective date and expiry date so after this you will have policy policy and then premium so these are all the things and other than this what you will have coverage what is the meaning of coverage external risk if it is a insurance you have a risk term okay cover what is the meaning of coverage so what are the see what yeah say so suppose you are going to go for health care okay we will only cover we will not cover heart disease okay for the first heart disease we will cover second third and we will not cover okay that is the possibility of coverages okay you will go and say suppose you are taking a health care insurance okay under your coverage what what they will have we are not going to cover chronic diseases okay so say suppose you are going to be on bed for a certain period of time suddenly we will cover it okay again it depends if you are met with accident we will cover okay and then so for hospitalization fees not for entire your lifetime okay it should not be again a chronic okay and then like this they will go ahead and write down something under the coverages and non coverable things non coverable things mostly they will hide before they give you a policy okay so now after the coverages you have got a quote some quote number q123 and a premium is 5000 you need to pay after your quote is generated they will again ask you additional coverages what is additional coverages means see these are the coverages which are not defaultly included to your policy okay say so suppose you are going to take additional coverage for health means additional coverage can be we will also cover second heart attack only first is default second also will be covered once you check any additional coverage selected 
your premium will be obviously increased okay so so these are the terms with respect to insurance either uh, whether it is health or whatever it is additional coverage is with respect to automobile what you will see say suppose your coverage is for only your vehicle okay so they will not cover glass part when you take vehicle insurance right, right. so like your mirrors and all will not be covered in the insurance it can come under additional coverage if you want to cover your mirrors in the additional coverage you need to select they will increase the premium okay so your engine lifetime whenever you are buying some say suppose it is a warranty project your engine they will cover only one year your additional coverage can be five years whenever you are buying a product from some uh, like tv whatever it is you they will ask you you want to go ahead and uh, buy some additional coverage for it what is the additional coverage means additional warranty here yeah. okay so like that your additional coverages you need to identify and then give it one or two you tell that's enough okay now so these are all the terms that you need to identify whatever that is being required we'll add more terms if you get it okay now after this you need to go ahead and think about your project screen by screen okay so so what is the first screen that is then my project so always you need to imagine a situation where a person is going to the business direct you think about manual procedure and convert it to an application okay so i want a bank account what is my first procedure i'll go to bank okay going you cannot implement here okay after i go what i will do think about manual procedure and tell me what i will do user details form or basically we will create user details form i have completed all my personal details next paper will be there in the next paper what i will write what is the type of account i want okay from which bank i want from which branch i want type of account savings current account means transaction details when my bank account should be effective so on say effective date okay so there will not be expiry for bank account and and what else will be there yeah so that, that screen is completed that paper is third paper i will go ahead and give document submission these are the documents i can submit for uh, while applying for a bank okay and then the post screen refers who, who is going to refer to you this bank okay related to the referral information and then what else fifth screen so with this your process is done you will sign on and then submit the document and you will go later internal process will be there so next process will be review they will review everything whatever so the means here after routing once you have submitted up to here four screen it will be routed to managers some managers depends on the conditions taken so routing is available here and they will either approve or reject based on whatever it is done okay say so suppose you have been identified you will give your pan card number and all you whatever the pan number you have given the details you have submitted and that is not matching me they will reject it okay it is matching they identified that uh, say suppose some criminal uh, background they will not give you okay so further if vijay malya goes ahead and ask for a uh, bank account anyone will give in india no one will give okay so like that they will do some background verification also they have their own process their own teams okay it will be routed to another team for verification purpose verification team what they will do once their verification is been done they will go ahead and tick mark verification is done successfully approved it will come to manager manager will approve verification is rejected this is what the problem comments they will put it revert it back to the manager so manager may send it for secondary verification or manager may reject it okay case will be closed otherwise it will further proceed after the approvals it will further proceed to identify what we can give to him okay so he is applying for a current account okay does he have a business which is been currently running does he have a valid landline phone number that has been given okay the establishment is correct and everything is fine they will go to verify all the documents okay everything is fine they will go ahead and give you the bank account otherwise they will reject it at any point of time you may have to reject based on the verification that is been done so this is how you need to think about the project so now we'll go ahead and think about insurance project so in insurance project what we'll have customer customer details transaction details from which branch you want to take what type of insurance you want to take after that it is vehicle insurance what we have done so what is the vehicle details what is the license details what are the driver details so who is the primary driver or secondary driver okay so we'll collect all the details what is his age based on age also you will reject or give the insurance based on age also your premium will be increased or decreased so if you are 20 years and you are going to apply for vehicle insurance on your name so your premium will be higher than the 40 years 30 years 40 years guy okay build line tarah slow ga untaru building kind fast ga untaru kada okay so kaabatti premium berigutadi accident avadan chances untai okay so based on your age and everything there will be many calculations that will be done behind the scenes this and all you need to take it as a decision rules and you need to think about it and what decision rule i can implement for this 
and all you write down prepare well with four five pages and then appear for the interview okay after this is been done it will go to once after you view your license details it will go to make a service call to the department of rto see this guy has given these details these are correct or not okay this is correct he has made any faults in the future uh, in past okay means he has jumped the signals or he, he has done any violations he has done any accidents so based on that your premium will be increased okay so now your vehicle details you will supply anti theft is there for your vehicle say suppose your vehicle anti theft is there means there will be less number of chances your premium will be decreased automatically anti anti theft uh, uh, this particular device is not there means say suppose you are going to put a uh, uh, this one what is that uh, cab see you will what what you will do for your cab say suppose you are an agency and you are registering for vehicle insurance in your cab you, you will hire a driver he may escape with the cab right at any point of time so there is a more chances that you can go ahead and put uh, be under risk so you may climb at any point of time with the risk of anti theft so that time you have a gprs in your monitoring from office if he is going to like this the gaps will be defined so if you are going to move the region whatever they have uh, given to you engine will be automatically stopped they will come agency people and catch you why you have moved out of the region should not move out of the region when you are going to work on a as a cab driver okay so like that devices are available in your car or not in your vehicle okay if that device is there there is a less chance of risk so your premium will be decreased nothing is there means premium will be increased so this and all will be taken into consideration okay say suppose you are going to apply for a premium where your vehicle is uh, in uh, claim where your vehicle is met with an accident so now when your vehicle is uh, vehicle is met met with an accident so that time they will collect whether you are uh, you are uh, uh, service provider say suppose you, are, you bought a car from maruti okay means they will go ahead and give you towing uh, what what is meaning of towing your vehicle is stopped at any point of time due to some uh, problem within this one year means you can call toll free number they will come and they will tow the vehicle and take it for a free of cost after one year if you are going to insure the same vehicle your premium will be increased because towing cost also will be there on this particular claim procedure they will give you so like this everything they will consider and they will calculate the premium so after this last details or whatever that is been taken then you will proceed further to display the quote information along with the calculated premium after quote is done additional coverages additional coverage is done means you will go ahead and proceed to submit the policy policy number will be generated once after you made the payments okay so the payment system can be a third party system so any business you think it in a manual way and create the screens for it okay now so the first screen in the business of insurance our bank say that you are going to bank means they will give you a form but in the application wise how they will do is when they are going to access it first they will verify they will not directly go and open the form and then they will enter the details and create an account for you they will verify whether this particular person is already an account holder in our bank or not that should be done we are going to take an insurance from bajaj alliance they will verify whether you are already been insured previously or not if you are there means your account will be already there they will go ahead and add a new policy okay they are not required to create your account again if you have already one account in the bank you are going to take the second account second account type they will put all these accounts under one account name single account name will be there you have savings account current account everything so your first screen in our application of insurance or banking or whatever it is okay health care search screen see this search cannot be implemented in uh, will not be implemented in pega okay only the search screen will be there results will be taken mostly it will be 99% service call why it will not be implemented here application will go down if you implement here itself so you will make a service call you can make it a connect so okay first screen if you go for an insurance policy they will verify your first, first name last name surname whatever that you have given they will verify whether you are already available or not okay other than this with a pan number in india or with an ssn number in us also they can search it will make a service call whether this particular customer with these details is already available in our system or not if you are already available means your account is already there it will make in the next screen these are the account details it will display once you click on search it will display the details down below you will say proceed to court okay otherwise proceed to create an account and a button also okay two buttons will be there one button will be conditionally displayed sorry two buttons will be conditional when account is there account button will not be visible only quote proceed to 
take policy. That button will be available. If account is not there, proceed to policy will not be available. Only account button, create an account button will be available. Okay, that's how it will be imagined. So after the set screen, you will set and details are available. If you are going to create an account, it is a decision making here in your flow. Your first one is so here is the start for your flow and you will proceed to an assignment okay so here in the assignment you have search implemented so after this what you will have uh, yeah decision so after that you will have a decision so whether he has an account or not he has account go in this way so he does not have an account go to create an account he already has an account means go ahead and so you need to draw the flow diagram like this on your paper okay so so here what it will display it will go ahead it will display account creation this is the account assignment okay say suppose once after your account uh, in the account account creation what are the details that you will give what details you will give i will go ahead here so in account creation what are the details you will give personal details address details normal address address details what is your address and all okay so once after you give personal details and address details you will give a zip code right it should be validated so zip code should be validated here is a you can say connect soap in your application connect soap is available okay otherwise it can be within the two 2.1 okay account creation may happen otherwise it can go to 2.2 okay so if an account is already been available means so what it will do it will go to proceed to collect your transaction information so here if you come across with this one account is available all the details you have given account has been created you will proceed to give transaction information if you don't have an account already sorry if you have already an account is available means it will directly come to here okay this is the path it will directly go otherwise it will go to this screen and come here clear so like this you need to imagine and do here is the decision table where you have used the decision table in your application means one place is already done many other places you can use still okay so transaction information screen what are all the things you will give agency code means branch code and then effective date expiry date the transaction type <coughs> means insurance means personal commercial or bank means savings account current account whatever it is okay this is been done now okay in the third screen so once after you have given your account details and transaction information in the third screen what you will do see say suppose you need to display address details again this is your address verify or edit it see you will fill the current address details here i'll give current address details say suppose he already has taken a policy previously his current address is kbhp 9th base now he is staying at kukatpally area so third screen you need to display current address details verify it and proceed further or edit it and change submit and proceed further it will update the current address details okay so fourth one so after the address details is completed what we can go ahead and take vehicle details so what you will give in the vehicle details again same thing whatever we have done vehicle identification number if you are going to put your uk project you need to identify this what is the way in india win is there in us win is there in uk what is there in australia what is there you need to identify if you go to the web you will get it and then make model and everything will be displayed see here once you enter vehicle identification number it is a service call again 
service called to wind department it's a government department right okay so if it is successfully verified only you will display what you will display make model year uh inka okay make and make year and have now okay a company what is the company that has okay these and all you will display and in the fifth screen you will give driver details okay when you give driver details what are the details you will give see you are going to take the insurance but see here you may not be the driver for this vehicle you are hiring a driver so see you are a owner of the car you, are, you have to take insurance on your name but you cannot be the driver right driver can be someone else okay you need to provide the driver details what are, what is his name okay and inka em untai name his address details and his age gender all these common details and so on okay now say this is the principal driver he is the spelling endara right he is the primary driver anmar okay next there can be occasional driver right so sometimes when your driver is not there he will drive the car okay that means you are the occasional driver so here you need to provide all these details so any one of these two drivers you have mentioned here if the vehicle is being damaged in their hands only it will come under coverage if someone else if you give to your friend and damage it we don't bother okay in us like this it will be so you will go ahead and give in the vehicle details whether it is a commercial vehicle or normal vehicle okay that is a personal vehicle or commercial vehicle here it is a personal vehicle means personal vehicle details commercial vehicle means all the vehicle details you need okay now here you go ahead okay so after the driver details is been completed you will give license details okay so in the license details what you give license number so here it will make a service call again right service call to whom license department government department again so on the license number is valid or not so it will verify if it is not valid it is not valid if it is valid it is valid it will display okay all other details you will provide and then proceed further to sixth screen so after the license details what whatever it will display is coverage details so coverage details it is a read only read only screen so what it will display it will display all the coverages okay this is what we are going to cover this is what we are going to cover everything will be displayed you need to accept and proceed okay so you need to accept and proceed so once you accept this one and proceed further so it will go ahead and display last details so here you can mention hang on seventh one and sixth one here last details see once after you give your license number this person has done any violations before and all lost details this is just a service call again service call on your win number plus service call on your last uh, license number what are, whatever that has been done previously all the data will be displayed here okay with the losses information okay there will be another another uh, uh, department lost details department they will provide the lost details it will make a service call and display all the previous losses information okay so that means now after the coverage details lost details is done coverage details once you are accept and proceed it will display code details screen see in the code details screen what it will display code number okay and then it will display quoted premium and it will display effective date expiry date which you have entered previously right effective date and expiry date so it will go and display all these things okay here you will you will say proceed to take policy <coughs> submit see once you say proceed to take policy here in the seventh screen once after it is displayed okay you are good with this and proceed to take policy it will display additional coverages So in additional coverage, what will display? It will display check boxes and additional coverage will be displayed. You can opt for multiple additional coverages.
See, your quoted premium is $500 means if you select additional coverages, in policy premium will be increased. If you do not select anything means you will be going ahead and getting the same details. And umbrella coverages. Next screen is umbrella coverages. What is this umbrella coverages? See, it is something related to additional coverage only, but umbrella coverage means again you are going to separately insure some of the part. Okay, I want to go and insure my passengers who are traveling in the car. See, if you take a personal loan, they will give you an umbrella coverage of insurance. See, if you are going to cover your vehicle, so you, you can go for umbrella coverage of passengers coverage. Whoever has been traveling for one year, we will cover them. You need to pay for, uh, say suppose you are going to cover three people means you need to pay three into three nine thousand so that we, they will be uh, uh, allowed to get a uh, coverage of one lakh each it is not a specific person it can be anyone okay whoever is traveling that time okay that's what you can make it as an umbrella coverage say suppose passengers coverage and then so after this is been done it will go ahead and display uh, payment information payment details screen okay so in the payment details you can select the payment mode see it can be one time again this will decide on your premium or two times can be four times see if you are going to opt for a commercial vehicle insurance you may not be able to pay at one time single shot three months every three months you can go ahead and pay a premium okay four times so you're going to make it one time single shot means five thousand dollars Two times means it will be five thousand five hundred. Four times means it will be six thousand dollars by four. Okay, like this they will calculate the premium. So and after that, once your payment is been done, so you will go. It will go and display policy information. What it will display here? Policy number. So this is about P one two three four five six and premium. This is premium final premium. And then it will display. Effective date, expiry dates. So this is now little display. You will say finally the case will be closed and on the effective date your policy will be effective. And see once this is been done, your policy should be it will be inserted into the tables and all. It will not be effective. So what it will you will do is you will submit this to agent. Okay. So agent will run on every overnight. Okay, so if it gets the data, the date, the date that is going to get current date is equal to effective date means this particular policy will be updated with a column called policy effective in the tables back end tables effective equal to y till the time by default it is n. Okay, policy effective equal to y means these are all the policies which are active policies in my system. Okay, here agent will take. Okay, like this agent you can use here, which is a standard agent. Okay, okay, so that's what. Okay, so like this, see, before, see, once you start telling about a ride, you should not tell uh, all this. Okay, so if you are going to tell all this, there is no one to listen. Okay, so here you go ahead. You need to explain your project within one minute. Okay, initially when you are going to explain your project, see my policy is an insurance project which is mainly meant for which is being accessed by the back operations teams. Okay, so the agents will collect the information on a file and submit it to the back operations teams. Back operations teams open the application and submit all the details. So once they submit all the details, it will generate a quote number with a quoted premium. Later they will go ahead and proceed to further to get the policy. Once the policy is been, uh, once it uh, it completes, the policy number will be generated along with the final premium and the policy will be effective, uh, will be available for a term of one year with an effective and expiry dates. That's it. I understand that your application is generates a policy for a term of one year. Okay. So if you want to explain it now in detail, you need to go ahead and explain. Okay, so within a minute simply you will give what is the input, what is the output. We will submit all the customer details, vehicle details, driver details, loss details and everything we will be submitting. It will generate a quote with a quoted premium. After that it will go, we will go ahead and submit the additional coverage details and uh, we will go ahead with the payment and it will generate a policy number with a final premium. It will be for a term of one year with an effective and expiry dates. That's it. Everyone will understand.
okay so if it is a banking project loan account means we'll submit all these details our loan will be given once the loan is been given to you see loan will not be activated by you loan will be activated by banker okay so it will be submitted to an agent on the specific day this was the day there will be this much this was one day on the specific day that uh, agent will update it to Y and it sent this request to bank so bank will go ahead and disperse the amount okay so like this you need to think uh, think about anything in real time how it works and create it, it as an application so if you know this one you can implement you can uh, go ahead and uh, tell any project it's not only loan it's not only insurance healthcare whatever it is you should be able to explain the project Okay. take it in general way it is understandable to humans okay so like that you explain your project in one minute what is the input what is the output what are the screen uh, uh, things that you will give as an input okay and then you, if you want to go ahead and explain completely you know to tell all these things where your service calls are being made so the places you can tell agency code i'll give service call and vehicle identification number is a service call lost details is a service call and then and policy number is a service call to mainframe code number see these numbers where it will generate code number and policy number prps will not generate you will make a service call to mainframe and it will generate see and your rating calculation also will be done by uh, some mainframe system itself you can tell that okay what is that is if you don't know about mainframe means i did not involve in that implementation you can tell that that's okay okay so like this you need to go ahead and explain about your project so the same thing where you have used file listeners in your project so in this project where you have used file listener hmm? so how, how about file listener here see this is the manual process we talked about right it's the same thing you can automate so every all the data you will collect in a file scan it and send it to the centralized department in a csv file format csv file once it is placed on the bpm server will go ahead and read the file call an activity activity will call new from flow in the activity in the flow you will have all these flow shapes available okay so there will not be any manual intervention all are utility shapes only whatever that it is you are entering manually it is the they are already in the file it will take at each and every level to the properties and then proceed further to in the automation process okay you can include where you have used routing you can tell them so we need approvals at these stages you need to identify the approval parts and all otherwise the work will be transferred to different departments okay and you need to identify where you have used SLAs when when you wrote the task you need an SLA okay once it is goes for the disbursement, it will have an SLA. It should be completed within the specified time or something. Or once it is go to uh, goes to approval team, so it should be completed. This is how you need to understand and identify, and you need to include, and you need to be be prepared well, be prepared well before you go to the interview about the project. This is how you need to prepare. Okay, if you tell in this way, no one will like, uh, expect more than this. That is enough. Okay, but for every one route, you identify one task in your application and go okay where you have used the decision table one place you can take and like this many other places we have decision tree something like that okay where you have done validations many validations you can mention okay so where you have used the decisions in your flow you can mention okay SLAs routing where you have used agent where you have used uh, file listener okay so this and all you can go ahead and uh, let them know Okay, so if you're good, we can go ahead and wind up. So we'll meet uh, class, whatever the Monday Monday classes in time. We can already. So if you need any help at any point of time, you can ask me.